Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on planning and carrying out investigations, level three experimental design. You can see that we're going to do a little bit of measuring in here. And when you come up with an investigation in science, we want to make sure that that investigation is always designed to understand a natural phenomena. So that's the point of an investigation. We want to make sure as we design our investigation that it's a real fair test so we can get good data and that helps us better understand the phenomena. And so step one is always identify the phenomena. The next thing is to start thinking about, okay, what are the good elements of an investigation? And there are three things that we should start with. The first is the purpose. Why are we doing the investigation? The next is the hypothesis, and then the final is going to be some kind of a prediction that we're making related to the investigation. Once you've done that, then we can start planning the investigation. Planning the investigation, especially if you want a fair test, you really have to start thinking about the variables. So some of the variables you might be familiar with would be like the independent and dependent variable, but equally important are going to be the controlled variables. What are the things that we're going to control in the experiment? After watching this video, you should be able to collect good data on phenomena like a pendulum and how a pendulum moves or maybe an Atwood machine. I'm going to start by showing you how to create an investigation around a phenomena of a simple car on a ramp. And then you'll have a chance to do the same with some materials and uh, the rate of, of melting of ice. So let me clean this up and then we'll get started. All right, so I've got a little white car and I've got a ramp. The ramp is made with just a few Legos. So I'm going to put this on the top of the car and it looks like I can measure how far it goes accurately. And so first of all, what I want to do is define some of these things. What's the phenomena and then what's the purpose? Okay, so the phenomena that I'm investigating is this white car and the ramp. Um, the purpose then is to answer the following question. How does the starting height, so on the ramp, how high it is, how does that affect the distance that it travels? Those are just two easy things. I can change the starting height and I can think about distance traveled. I also could have angled it. I could have used a different car. I could use a different surface. So there's a lot of things that we'll come back to when we talk about controlled variables that I could have studied, but we're just gonna start with a simple question. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna write down a hypothesis. Um, let me show you what a good hypothesis would and then describe the elements of the hypothesis. Okay, so the hypothesis that I wrote down is the first thing of a hypothesis should always be what you think. So it's, it's your idea. I said an increase in the starting height will cause an increase in distance traveled. And then I've got a because. So you always have to have an explanation. So a good hypothesis has two portions. It has what you think, and then it has an explanation. And that's following the world word because. Because the car will have more initial energy. So as I move it up the ramp, it's gonna have more energy. And so that's going to be my explanatory hypothesis. It's not just a guess, it's what I think is going to happen and why is that going to happen. Next thing I wanna make is a specific prediction. So let me write that down. Okay, so for my prediction, what I wrote down is if I increase the starting height from two centimeters, so that would be two centimeters up to eight centimeters up, then the distance traveled will increase at each height. So if I go maybe two, four, six, eight, I should see an increase at each of those. And so with a prediction, you want to be as specific as you can in the prediction, it's gonna help you on the plan. So now I've got these three purpose, hypothesis, prediction, and the next thing I have to figure out is going to be, okay, what is going to be my plan? What are gonna be the variables that I'm going to change? And so a way to start thinking about variables, if we put them to the side, is that these are all the things that could change in the experiment. And so a way to start thinking about that, if, if you don't even come up with a question, is just start listing some of the things that could change. So the distance traveled, that's something that could change. Another thing that could be, be changed is the 
So the distance traveled and the starting height could change, but let me list just some other things that might vary in the experiment. Okay, so some of the things that I've added is the type of car, the angle of the ramp, the driving surface, so if this is on sand versus on this, this uh, wood or on this surface here, or even the measuring point, am I measuring from the front of the car or the back of the car? All of those things are going to be things that could vary. And so in science, what you have to do is you have to only change one of these things. So I could change the type of the car and see how far the distance traveled, or I could change the driving surface and I could see how far it traveled, but all the other things I have to keep the same. And so what do we call that in science? We call that the controlled variables. And so in this case, I'm going to change the starting height. I'm going to see how it affects the distance traveled. But all these other things are going to be controlled variables. Those are the things that I have to keep the same or I have to control in the experiment. And so once I've done that, it makes it easy for me to start thinking about what my independent and my dependent variable is. It's just going to be what I change and then what is the thing that I'm actually going to measure. So let me write these two down on these blocks, independent variable and dependent variable. So I wrote the starting height is going to be my independent variable and then my dependent variable is going to be the average distance traveled. You always want to do multiple trials and so I'm going to do an average of these. I put an arrow here because the independent variable is what I'm changing and that's going to cause a change in the dependent variable. That's what that arrow represents here. So I've changed this and this dependent variable is dependent on that and it's not dependent on all these other things because we're going to keep those controlled in the experiment. And so this is going to be the data that we're going to collect. Now all I have to do is just write up a plan. A plan is going to be something that someone could follow. So they could, I could give them this material and they could just follow my plan and they're going to get similar results to what I get. And so let me write a detailed plan. Okay, so my plan is this, angle the ruler ramp using three Lego widths, release the car front bumper with the front bumper at two centimeter starting height, measure the distance traveled on a ruler surface for three trials, and repeat the starting height of four centimeters, six and eight centimeters, and average for all trials. You can see that it would have been really hard for me to write a plan until I'd identify what are all the control variables and what am I changing and what am I measuring. So now that I've done that, the next thing I have to do is I have to set up a data table. How am I going to gather this data? And let me put that right here in the middle. Okay, now I've got a data table. In the data table, I've got my starting heights. I could just write those in. And then I have an area where I could put my three trials in. It's really important that you do multiple trials so I can get an average of these. And if these are, are varying quite a bit, that means I don't have great experimental design. Okay, so the last thing that I have to do now is collect some data. So I've got my trials here, I've got my ramp now set up. So I'm just gonna do this really quick, but I'm gonna gather some data and I can show you what to do with that. Okay, so now I've collected some data and I've found the average. You can see that in my first trial, they all were about the same and my average was similar to that. But some of these, if I look at the six centimeter one, 
it's quite a bit different from 15 to 17. And so those all should be the same. I'm sure if I were to go back and look at the video, there are gonna be certain things that I didn't like control perfectly, but that's how science works. And if I wouldn't have done multiple trials, then I wouldn't be able to really make this claim that the starting height as it increases leads to an increase in distance traveled. I think that my prediction is pretty spot on. But also, that's not the point of an investigation. The point of an investigation is learning these skills, how to make hypotheses, plans, control variables, and then how can I take this data now and go back to the phenomena? So what do I learn from this data that I can uh, at least describe more accurately the phenomena? And so what I'm gonna do is clean all this up and then you're gonna have a chance to do one of these on your own. Okay, now that you've learned how to plan an experiment, I've got a new phenomena for you. I've got uh, different materials in this ice cube tray. So I have this material, which is acrylic, nylon, copper, tungsten, PVC, and aluminum. So these are all different types of materials. I'll put links to this down below. And then I've got some ice cubes. So I have six ice cubes. So what I'd love to have you do is, um, identify the phenomena. What's the phenomena that we might want to investigate? What's some purpose, hypothesis, prediction, come up with the controlled variables independent, and then what data you're going to collect. Then unpause the video and then come back and you can see how our ideas compare. Okay, so the first thing I would want to do is I'd want to figure out, okay, what what, what is the phenomena and what might I want to investigate? So let me write that down. So the first thing that I would write down is I'm going to investigate materials and ice melting. So just wondering if I put the ice on these, how are they going to melt and how is that going to change? So then let me write the purpose and then hypothesis and a prediction. Okay, so my purpose is to answer the following question. How do different materials affect ice melting? So that's what I'm wondering. Uh, my hypothesis is that the ice cubes will melt faster on metallic materials. So the metallic like the copper, the tungsten, and the aluminum because the heat will conduct more readily. You can see in my hypothesis I have what I think is going to happen and then I have to have an explanation of why. I think it's energy flow. And then the last thing is that the ice cubes will have a shorter melt time on the metals. Copper, tungsten, aluminum than the non-metals. So the acrylic, PVC, and the nylon. So that's my prediction. What's the next thing I have to come up with? I have to come up with what are my controlled variables and then what are my independent and dependent variables? Okay, so what I wrote down for uh, my independent variable is the material type. I'm going to change that and I'll run all the trials at once. But then I'm going to look at the average melt time in minutes. That's going to be my dependent variable. What do I want to control? The size of the ice cube. So those are all going to be uniform. Also the material volume. How much like volume do I have in each of these cubes? Uh, next, the room temperature and then the tray size and the materials. Those are the things that I'm going to try to keep constant. Now that I've done that or controlled, the next thing I want to do is I want to go through and I want to write up a plan. So that's a plan that someone could follow so they could do this experiment again.
Okay, so the plan, I'm gonna place the various metallic and non-metallic materials in the ice cube tray, uh, making sure that they have the same volume. Then I'm gonna place an ice cube on top of each material and then record a time-lapse video with a clock. After all ice has melted, record the melt times for each material. Repeat for a second trial and then calculate the averages. So that's gonna be my plan. I think somebody should be able to um, just follow that, especially if I give them a data table. So let me put together a data table. Okay, so here's my data table. I've got the materials listed here. I got my three metals at the beginning, and then I have my three non-metals right here. Um, it took quite a long time to gather this, so I've got a time-lapse video of it. We could just take a look at that. And so you can see the ones that are non-metals, it takes a long time for the ice to melt. Let me go back to that again. So it takes a long time for them to melt, and they eventually melt. You can see time, that's a minute hand over here going. If we look at the other one, you can see the same thing happens. On the metal, it goes really, really fast, but it takes a long time for the non-metals to go. And so um, you can see them getting eventually smaller and smaller. And so what I'm gonna do is now just write down the data and then I'll calculate some averages for these two trials that I ran uh, earlier. Okay, so here's the data that I have. You can see it's not perfect, uh, but um, I can see that in the, in the metals, it's obviously is gonna melt in a shorter amount of time, and I saw that in the video, and a longer time in the non-metals. You can also see it's important that I include the data for my two trials, because my second trial, you can see, took quite a bit longer than my first trial. We still see the pattern of non-metals melting slower than uh, metals, but you can see the numbers are quite a bit bigger. And I think one of the reasons why is I had a hard time controlling the room temperature. So throughout the day, the temperature just in my house started to, ch to change, and I think that's affecting the results of the different trials. And so um, now that you've learned how to create an experiment of your own, what I'd love to have you do is try this. So I've got um, a couple of phenomena that you could use down below. I've got a pendulum with a little simulation so you could get some data and then there's one on an Atwood machine so you could get data as well. So I think the key thing when it comes to investigations is most of the work is actually in the planning and then a little bit is in the data that you gather. And that really reflects what happens in science and so that's experimental design and I hope that was helpful.